Hi, I'm Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. Raised panel cabinet doors are one of the most popular projects that woodworkers undertake in their shops, and we get a lot of questions from woodworkers about how to make them. Here at Infinity, we offer three different types of raised panel router bits. I'm going to show you each one of these and why you might choose one over the other, and I'll also show you how I set each of them up here in our shop to get great results. The most common type of raised panel router bit is the standard horizontal raised panel bit. It allows you to make a standard raised panel. They're available in up to six different profiles, so you have a great selection of the types of raised panels that you can make for your projects. They allow you to make a panel that's raised on one side and flat on the other, so on the inside of your door you're going to have just a flat panel. Setting up a horizontal raised panel router bit in the router table is really easy. It has a center bearing that allows you to use a ruler to set the fence setting. And I like to set the bit low in the table for the first pass, only taking about a quarter of an inch deep cut. The second pass, I'll raise the bit roughly an eighth of an inch if I'm making a 5 8 inch thick panel. And this will give me a perfect quarter inch tongue for my finished panel. I also set my router speed to around 12,000 RPM, nice and slow for this large diameter bit. To set my bit height, I'm gonna use an eye gauging snap check, and I'm gonna zero the snap check to my router table plate. And I'm gonna take the indicator, set it on top of the tallest portion of the router bit, and then I can raise my router bit till it reads, 3 eighths of an inch. My panel's 5 eighths of an inch thick, so if I raise it until my snap track reads 3 eighths, I should get a perfect quarter inch tongue to fit in my frame. Another easy way to set your router bit height is to use a double square. Just set it to the height that you need for your panel's tongue, reference off of your panel, and raise your bit till the bit touches the bottom of your ruler and you're ready to go. One of the reasons I love Jessam's clear cut stock guides for raising panels is especially for the second pass where I've already undercut where my work holding will be, I don't have a lot of tension. They just hold the panel nice and steady without pushing down. If you were using a traditional feather board held vertically against the fence, it's going to apply downward pressure and could potentially make that panel rise up. The eye gauging digital thickness gauge is a handy tool to have for checking the thickness of your panel's tongue so you can make those minor adjustments. The horizontal raised panel router bit with built in back cutter allows you to make panels that are raised on the front and are also back cut on the back. This allows you to make panels that will be flush with your frame on the surface and on the back side of your door. They're also go going to make it very easy to get a true quarter inch tongue on your panel to fit into your frame. To set up our infinity raised panel bit with back cutter, we're not able to simply raise and lower the bit to limit the amount of material we remove in a pass. We have to use the fence, so we're going to set our bit's height to the height that we desire for our panel, and then we're going to use the fence to limit our depth of cut. This bit does come with an extra bearing to make this process very easy. You're simply going to remove the top nut from the router bit, slide the back cutter off, and replace the bearing inside. If you want to make multiple passes, more than two, you're able to just adjust your fence accordingly and use a ruler as a guide to set how much material you remove per pass.
To set up for our second pass, we're just going to use our ruler, adjust our fence, lock down our fence, and we're ready to go. The vertical raised panel router bit is great if you have a lower horsepower router in your table. It's still going to allow you to make a standard style of raised panel door that's flat on the back and raised on the front. But you're going to be able to do it at that lower horsepower router. The difference is you're going to run your panel vertically at the router table rather than laying flat on the table itself. Setting up a vertical raised panel bit while different than a horizontal is no more difficult. I like to use a snap check gauge to set my bit height. I want to set that height to around an inch and three eighths for my raised panel. Then I can use the snap check once again off of the cutter referenced against my fence to set my depth of cut because I'm running my panel through the bit vertically. So I'll bring my fence forward. My final depth of cut will be about 3 8 of an inch, but to start off, I'm gonna make a cut of around a quarter of an inch. If I wanted to make more than two passes, I could easily take an eighth of an inch at a time and get great results. Once I have made my first pass, I'll reset my fence, make my second pass, and my panel should be ready for the frame. Because I'm using a vertical raised panel bits and my panel will be setting vertically against the fence, I need a way to support that panel as I run it through the router bit. For this, I like to use a set of tandem feather boards like these from Milescraft. I'll just set my panel in place, add some tension to the feather boards, and lock them down. Any of these Infinity raised panel router bits are going to be a great match to an Infinity Railin style router bit set for making your cabinet doors. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog for more great information on the projects we make and the tools we use here in the Infinity Tool Shop. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like to stay up to date on what's going on here at Infinity.